The twin baby persistently pointed to his brother's head, leaving Joe and Lena in shock, they hadn't heard of the condition the doctor described, filling their minds with questions, their primary concern remained the well-being of their baby, the Klein family had led a fairy tale life, happy and moving at a pace envied by many friends, despite doubts about their relationship's longevity due to their young age when they got together. Lena and Joe proved them wrong, five years into their marriage. Both successful college graduates, they faced the challenge of infertility due to Joe's past trauma, adoption or IVF seemed their only options, opting for IVF and later trying ICSI, their hopes were diminishing after four failed attempts, however, a glimmer of hope arose with Lena's fifth pregnancy test, confirming their long-awaited success, their journey had just begun when they learned they were expecting twins, bringing them overwhelming joy, yet, amidst their excitement, Lena's pregnancy proved challenging, from severe morning sickness to debilitating pains, Lena endured a tumultuous journey, with multiple hospitalizations indicating something was amiss, at seven months pregnant, Lena encountered the last of her complications, prompting her doctor to prescribe bed rest due to the risk of premature birth and its potential serious consequences, with careful planning, on March 7, 2017, Lena underwent a cesarean delivery to ensure the safe arrival of her twin sons, Toby and Matthew, without further complications, the delivery was smooth, and within an hour of arriving at the hospital, Lena cradled her newborns with joy, however, their happiness soon gave way to concern when Joe noticed Matthew's peculiar behavior near Toby, initially dismissed as typical twin antics, they soon realized Matthew was trying to convey something significant. His constant pointing and gentle caresses to Toby's skull raised alarm bells, as weeks passed, the situation intensified, Toby's noticeably larger skull heightened their worry understanding Matthew's attempts to communicate, Lena and Joe rushed to seek medical help, their urgency was met with frustration when they discovered their pediatrician was on holiday, leaving them no choice but to wait until the following morning for an appointment, the night dragged on with anxiety gripping both Lena and Joe. Sleep eluding them when they awaited the dawn and the chance for answers, the couple's fears loomed heavy when they sat in. The pediatrician's office the next morning, trembling with anxiety, sharing their concerns, the pediatrician's grave expression only heightened their dread, urgently, she ordered an MRI for little Toby, suspecting something alarming, Toby, whimpering, was placed into the intimidating machine, while his desperate parents longed to comfort him, moments later, images began to materialize on the screen only to be swiftly concealed by the doctor, with a somber tone, she ushered Lena and Joe out of the room, leaving them bewildered and on the brink of despair, outside, Lena's composure crumbled, tears streaming down her face when she clung to Joe for support, the doctor's pale face and swallowed words only confirmed their worst fears, something was gravely wrong with their baby, in the agonizing wait, minutes stretched into eternity, each passing second fueling their mounting apprehension what had the scan revealed? Why was the test taking so long, was their son safe an hour later, the doctor emerged, Toby absent from her side, with a heavy heart, she motioned for Lena and Joe to follow, her downtrodden demeanor casting a shadow of uncertainty, their hearts heavy with worry, the couple braced themselves for the grim news awaiting them anxious for answers about Toby's whereabouts, the doctor remained silent on the matter but requested to run tests on Matthew, surprising Lena and Joe, unaware of the significance. They agreed, unaware that these tests held the potential to save. Toby's life, the couple possessed a crucial piece of information that could aid in diagnosing Toby's condition after conducting the tests, the doctor, perplexed, questioned Lena and Joe about their fertility treatments, though cooperative, Joe's frustration grew, demanding to know Toby's whereabouts, sensing the tension, the doctor revealed Toby's hospital admission due to a severe medical condition, withholding specifics, instead, she presented the couple with DNA test results, revealing Toby. And Matthew didn't share the same father, the revelation baffled Lena, struggling to comprehend, the doctor explained that Toby's conception likely occurred during an earlier round of treatment, suggesting an issue with the cell's thawing process, resulting in delayed fertilization and a state of hibernation, this anomaly could potentially explain Toby's condition, necessitating emergency surgery for a brain mass suspected to be related to his hibernation state, uncertain but deeply concerned. Lena and Joe grappled with the bewildering news, 
hoping for clarity and a path forward for their son's recovery. The news hit Lena and Joe hard, especially considering Toby's tender age, would he have the strength to endure such a daunting ordeal, uncertain of what steps to take. They grappled with the gravity of the situation, understanding the inherent risks of brain surgery, particularly for a child so young. They hesitated, however, the doctor's reassurance that the mass seemed non-intrusive. Not posing a threat to vital functions, offered a glimmer of hope realizing that waiting could only escalate the risks, Lena and Joe reluctantly agreed to proceed with the surgery, Toby was scheduled for the next morning, granting the couple a bittersweet reunion with their son, when they gazed at him with a mix of admiration and trepidation, uncertainty loomed heavy in their hearts, would this be their last chance to hold him? By lunchtime the following day, Toby emerged from the operating theater, and relief flooded over Lena and Joe when the doctor delivered the news of a successful procedure, with the mass removed without complications, Toby's road to recovery began, days later, both babies were home, with Toby's progress exceeding expectations, his smiles and babbling alongside his brother brought immense joy to his relieved parents, a testament to their resilience and the strength of their family bond. That's all about the first story and now let's watch another similar story. On August 22, 1988, Mary Holton received the news that there was a possibility she might be expecting conjoined twins, two days later, she cradled her newborn babies, Katie and Eilish, in her arms, the twins had separate heads and necks but were joined from the shoulders down, unlike the Manchester twins, who shared a heart and a set of lungs, a condition that made survival impossible for one of them. The Holton twins each had their own hearts and lungs, offering them a normal life expectancy. Although their internal organs were fused at the pelvis, their shared liver was sufficiently large to sustain both of them, they were amazingly content when they were infants, with Eilish being the more reserved of the two and relying on her sister Katie, who was more extroverted and lively, to take the initiative between them. The fact that Eilish had a larger appetite did not change the fact that Katie was consistently the plumper of the two, they navigated their one-of-a-kind world together. On their own, on the other hand, when they became older, the circumstances they were in were that much more difficult, for as long as they could remember, separation had been a concern, and when they were young children, the frightening reality of their future together was a significant burden for their parents. Both of them never learned how to walk together, and it was quite likely that they would never learn how to do so. The act of traveling from one location to another by the time the child was three years old consisted of a shuffle across the floor. Wheelchairs would be their only means of transportation in the long run. After three years of suffering, Mary and Liam finally came to the conclusion that they should go ahead and get surgery, there was a good likelihood that the separation would be successful, with the probability reaching as high as 70%, the operation was carried out with the assistance of the medical staff of Great Ormond Street Hospital, which was overseen by Professor Louis Spitz, a pediatric surgeon for the hospital. In the future, there was every reason to have hoped that the twins would lead lives that were both healthy and independent by themselves, the parents utilized two Velcro dolls to demonstrate how the dolls could be attached to one another and then removed in order to help their girls, who were three years old at the time, comprehend the processes involved. The fact that Katie seems to have a better understanding of the concept of separation than her sister is an interesting observation, she would make up little stories about what she would do if they were separated, whereas Eilish seemed to be less interested in the conversation when she was talking about it, the operation was carried out subsequent to that, on a day in the early spring of 1992, the operation, which was performed over the course of almost an entire day, was declared to be successful. The monitors that were attached to Eilish's severely sedated body began to exhibit unpredictable activity four days later, despite the fact that there was no clear cause for this observation, it was later determined by the medical staff that this was due to her compassionate reaction to her sister who was lying next to her, Eilish experienced a stoppage of her heartbeat during the nearly four weeks that their baby was in intensive care, Mary and Liam watched their daughter struggle to survive. A serious third-degree burn was a good analogy for the enormous wound that she had sustained when she had been linked to her sister, despite 
The extreme physical agony that she was experiencing as a result of the aftermath of the surgery, Eilish appeared emotionally exhausted, she retreated into herself and refrained from making any remarks, even before her parents broke the news to her in a gentle manner, it was clear that she had previously been aware of Katie's passing. At the end of the fourth month, Eilish was discharged from the hospital, having improved both her physical and emotional health to a more positive state. During the vehicle journeys home from school, she would occasionally talk about Katie, but more often than not, it seemed as though she was having a conversation with an imaginary friend, even in the present day, it is not known what recollections, if any, she has concerning her sister that she still retains in her memory, who remembers much about their lives at three, Mary is pondering, perhaps in some ways. It's better she doesn't recall much, as it might hold her back, despite the fact that Eilish has a photo of them together hanging on the wall of her bedroom and that there is a lot of film of them together, she rarely talks about Katie, in the end, she has never experienced any other life. Eilish and her family made the trip to Oklahoma City when she was six years old, and it was then that she was fitted with an artificial leg. Six weeks later, she was able to walk without assistance. She honored her twin sister by naming her new limb after her. Relatively recently, she returned from the United States with seven gold medals in the Irish American Games for the Physically Handicapped, she is currently in good condition and actively participating in activities, a national prize for children's bravery was bestowed upon her in October of last year. At this point in time, her life is as full of vitality as any 12-year-old should be. Westlife and the Kildare football team are two of her music and sports heroes, at the moment, she is enjoying the excitement of getting to spend the night. At the homes of her pals Eilish's three elder sisters, Claire, who is 16 years old, Therese, who is 15 years old, and Mary, who is 13 years old, provide her with companionship at home. Additionally, it is important to not overlook the youngest member of the family, Maeve, who is four years old. In some respects, she has helped fill the vacuum that Katie has left behind in the eight years that have passed since the procedure, the incredible fighting spirit and resiliency that Eilish has displayed. Astounded not only her parents but also everyone else who is familiar with her, she has always had a strong sense of survival, more than a sense of loss, says Mary in her reflection, given everything that she has been through, it is only logical that she would do this, she was able to learn to control herself from an early age, having a very straightforward approach to the events that transpired has been beneficial to her. But in addition to that, she is quite determined, because she would just destroy any obstacles that we put in her path, we have never put any obstacles in her way, the parents of Siamese twins who were born in the United Kingdom three weeks ago will challenge a ruling made by the High Court that allowed a hospital to separate their babies, this decision comes when Eilish Holden is about to enter her final year of elementary school, there is a high probability that both infants will be ended if the operation is successful, nevertheless, if it is carried out, there is a possibility that one of them will survive and go on to have a healthy life, the parents, who are extremely devout and come from a rural region in southern Europe, are of the opinion that nature ought to be allowed to take its course, they are unable to comprehend the concept of relinquishing one child in order to save the other, the Holtons, Liam and Mary, consider themselves exceedingly fortunate to have avoided having to make such a difficult choice what those poor people are enduring right. Now is the cruelest form of psychological torture, Liam makes the observation, they have no choice but to allow one of their children to pass away in order to continue living, what could possibly be a more difficult predicament for a parent to find themselves in, we do not believe that there is anything that we could say to them at this moment in order to console them because our circumstances were very different from theirs. On the other hand, we are keeping them in our thoughts and have a profound understanding of what they are going through currently, in the process of observing the painful and complicated case that is taking place in Britain, the Holtons are reminded of the suffering that they went through, in spite of the fact that they are contemplating the decision to split up their twins, they continue to be adamant in their conviction that they made the appropriate decision. We would not have gone through with the operation if we had known at that time that either of them. Children would pass away, however, if we were to find ourselves in the same situation again, we would choose the same course of action, Mary maintains, Katie will forever have a unique and irreplaceable identity in their hearts, when they pay their respects to her grave on Sundays, they often think about what their lives would have been like if she had lived, preoccupation with the past, on the other hand, serves no use.
They are more concerned with living in the here and now, and they have faith that Eilish will eventually come to appreciate the choice that they made in the years to come. Above is today's story, if you like it, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up, see you next time.